welcome to Destination Mohawk House. I'm your host, Nikki Morville. We here at Mohawk House are the trendsetters in Sussex County. On this week's show, we feature small plates and trendy cocktails. Also, we feature nationally known beer enthusiast, Garrett Oliver from Brooklyn Brewery, and for the first time in New Jersey, Speakeasy Brewery from San Francisco. Our 50 beer taps are constantly revolving. So you never know what's going to happen around the corner here at Mohawk House. So stay tuned for many twists, turns, and surprises. Come with me. I am here at the Mohawk House. We've got such a special night tonight. I am here with Garrett Oliver, the brewmaster for Brooklyn Brewery. That's right, the brewmaster. We're talking celebrity brewmaster here at Mohawk House, and he's going to be telling us all about the event tonight. So, Garrett. Before we go into our event tonight, tell me a little bit about the history. How do you become a brewmaster and how do you end up in Brooklyn? Well, the brewmaster is essentially the chef of the brewery. You know, so that's my job. I am the beer. I'm the liquid from the start to the finish. I started off home brewing in the early 80s. Uh, I got back from England where I had all these wonderful beers and I traveled all over Belgium and to Germany and the Czech Republic. And I got back to the United States and guess what? In 1984, we in fact did not have any beer. I thought we had beer, and the stuff I drank in college, I thought it was beer, but right. it was something else. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was Probably an industrial some of the stuff food I product. drank back in, in yep. college. It wasn't good. No, it wasn't good. So, I, you know, we didn't even like it. No. We drank it anyway. Exactly. So what did you have to do from there? Well, from there, I started making beer at home in order to have some beer, and then I fell in love with actually making it. So eventually, I fell in. I went to work for a brewery in New York City called Manhattan Brewing Company. Uh, the brewmaster was from England. And he worked for the venerable Sam Smith's Brewery, which I really loved and respected. And I learned the professional side from him. Eventually took that brewery uh, over as head brewer in 1993 and then went to Brooklyn Brewery at the end of 94. And, uh, and the rest has been pretty awesome. Let's talk a little bit about your beers. Now, as you all know, folks, Mohawk House, we specialize with Brooklyn Brewery. We've got, a, you know, an amenity of what you guys sell. Let's talk about some of your specialties. What do you really specialize in? Well, what we specialize in is beers that are designed to have a wide range of interesting flavors, you know, and just like wine or music or anything else, beer is occasional, meaning that, you know, you, you want a different beer on a fishing boat than you want in front of a fire in wintertime. Absolutely. You know, so beer is not supposed to be the same all the time, and our beers aren't. We have some beers that are more simple, some that are very complex, um, but, uh, some that are very rich and best with desserts, but they're always flavorful. And in any given year, we make about 25 different beers. Wow. Um, and we cover just a really broad range of flavor. And I think a lot of people aren't familiar with what beer can do. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's deep and wide and tall and actually has a wider range of flavor than wine does. And I say that as a wine geek. You know, All right, I, so you're I, both. I, I'm both. I'm okay. a cocktail geek too. But, <laughs> oh, I love it. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Mohawk House. You guys have a special relationship with us here. And talk about how, I mean, really, we've got 50 beers on tap, and you guys are certainly one of our big sellers here at Mohawk House. Why here? Well, I think, you know, because, you know, this is a place that, I mean, you look at the commitment that's being put into not only the building of this place, when you look at it, you think it's been here for 200 yeah. years, you know, and, and the owners having built this up from scratch in such a short period of time, with such richness of detail, you know, and, uh, uh, and the sumptuousness of the rooms and the real fireplaces going and whatever else. You know, what we like about this place is that this place is real. Yeah. You know, and they're, 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 they're really looking to bring it. Um, and uh, you can just see the buzz in the room. You know, this is this is people's local. Yeah. You know, and uh, they you know, and that's a phrase that they use a lot in England is they just refer to your local. You know, which always means your pub. It's a place that you go yes. and you walk in the door, and it's kind of like cheers. People know you yeah. when you walk in. They might even be pouring your beer as soon as you get in the door. Which is so true because at Mohawk House, people here do know your name just like a cheers, and uh, they do specialize in our beer here. So when you come in, we absolutely know the kind of beer we're looking for and what to pair it up with. Now tonight, if you're pairing dinner, this is pretty impressive here. People got to come in sample the food from our awesome chef, Ken Salmon, and got to drink your beer. How does this feel coming in, seeing this all come together? 
Well, over the years, I have been privileged to uh, uh, host about 900 dinners in 14 countries. Wow. You know, so, you know, I, I've seen a lot of dinners. This is one of the coolest rooms I've done a, yeah. a dinner in. Uh, I actually see a few familiar faces, people who uh, sometimes come visit us in New York, you know, and, and, and a lot of new people. And one thing that's really obvious to me is how much people, uh, you know, love the food and hopefully they love our beer, but they really love this place. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and that's always a special thing. Okay, folks, we are back in the kitchen. I am here with the executive head chef, Kenny Salmon, and the sous chef, my buddy, Brian Saxton. And today we're going to be cooking a whole lot of fun, sophisticated, small plate appetizers. It's hot, it's new, it's all the rage, and of course, it's here at the Mohawk House. We're gonna be cooking four, yep. and we're gonna be having more on our menu for the dining room and the bar. So these little plates are for you. So first, Kenny, what are we gonna start with? Ken and Brian have prepared this really cool setup for us. We've got the uh, spring roll. Tell us all about it. Now the spring rolls, I everybody does a different kind of spring roll, but mm -hmm. um, I was pacing the floor and I thought about this new spring roll to do. It's whole so soybeans mm -hmm. out of the pot. It's the whole soybean mixed with cream cheese and pear that's gonna be in the spring roll. Nice. And um, we fry off the spring roll and we're gonna have a uh, yuzu plum dipping sauce. Ooh, yuzu plum. And it's something that definitely hasn't been done before. No, <laughs> so. this sounds yummy. All right, where do we start, boys? All right, well, what we use this is not a traditional spring roll wrapper. What we're using is a wonton wrapper. Okay. And a I mixed edamame. the edamame with the cream cheese. And I mean, what's better than fried cream cheese? You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Wonderful. Okay. And we're gonna make four because there's four on the dish. All right, fabulous. So, cool. What we also put in our uh, spring roll is a little pear. Okay. So what we're gonna do one, two. So a little pear, 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 and a little pear. Fantastic. Put a little egg on there. Okay. Alrighty. Oh. Now this is gonna seal it. And then we take it, we fold the sides, come over. Okay. And we roll it. Beautiful. What we have there is a spring roll with pear, cream cheese, and edamame. What we do is, in a little hot oil, mm -hmm. we fry it. Boom. 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 And boom. Lovely. We fry them until nice and golden brown. So you can imagine, they're gonna have mm. a nice light brown. And the aroma, it smells delicious. Yeah, it smells good, it's awesome. I love it. Just a little mosh, just so it stays on the plate. I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. I love mosh. Take our ramekin. Mm -hmm and our yuzu sauce, Sweet. this stuff. It's powerful, it's so good. So what we really like to do is tone it down so you can taste everything. Beautiful. And that's our new small plate spring roll. Bravo. Pretty cool, little, they're about as big as your thumb, it's pretty cool. When I came here, it, it was like opening my eyes to a whole different world. Uh, and that's a funny thing because even when now today, as I consider myself a hop head, I love I, uh, hops in my beer. Yes. IPAs are my style of beer, double IPAs. Um, it, it's really just all about the education. Um, mm -hmm. Some people get nervous when they see 50 beers on tap. Don't be, you know? Yeah. We're here, we're here for you. We want you to try something new. We encourage, you know, trying something different, you know, if, if you wanted to try something that you never considered, a sample, or we want you to come here and try something different. Next up for our sophisticated small plates, we have the egg fettuccine pasta small plate. I'm anxious to see what this holds, Kenny. We well, have the here. egg fettuccine is nice. It's fresh pasta that we actually use the eggs from Steve's farm. Fantastic. And, um, Love that. <clears throat> which is awesome. It's and awesome. Where can you, you, the same restaurant uses the same eggs from their chickens. Yep. You don't find that anywhere. It's an Italian inspired dish, which is, it's easy. It's, um, it's not easy. It's technique, of course. It's of course. simple. 
but mm -hmm. it's how you do it. All right. So we what got. we have is long hot pepper. Okay. We want to get this going first because you want to char the skin so that you can bite. That's hot. But we get a nice hot pan. All right. Of course. Mm -hmm. We want to sear our shrimp. A big, nice shrimp. So I'm going to take two shrimp. Lovely. A little salt. Mm -hmm. We like to use uh, ground, freshly ground white pepper for this. Nice. For our seafood, we try to use white pepper. And for our meats, we use black pepper. Beautiful. A little uh, high smoking point canola oil. Okay. Nice hot pan. Put the shrimp in. So they plump right up. Kind of just sear that up. Very nice. Pour out that oil. And then we take our garlic. Right in the pan. And we like a good amount of garlic. And this is extra virgin olive oil with the garlic, so mm. we'll add a little Ooh, bit more that of that. Sounds good. And we'll let that go. We'll turn down our heat. We'll let it go nice and slow. As you see, brown. Not burn, brown. Beautiful. And you know, turn down the heat. Let it let it brown nice and slowly. Wow, that smells so good. We take a little red flake pepper, just a little touch. Yeah. A little oregano. And we toss in our broccoli raw. Just like that. Maybe hit it with a little salt. We'll take it easy on the pepper on that. Now, water. Okay. A little water. Nice. Now you got your flavors in. gorgeous. We're going to drop our pasta a little bit. Our water. Boom. We'll add another little touch of olive oil. It's good. Good flavor, but we could add Locatelli cheese or Parmesan cheese. Would make it excellent, so. And like I said, this is a nice small dish. You know, you come in, you order the bacon scallops, you order mm -hmm. the lamb lollipops, and it's like, this is like a little meal, you know what I mean? It's, Absolutely. It's, you have, your, pro, you have your, um, your starch, your vegetable. All in one. All in one. So, you get a little bit of that juice, the nice brown garlic. Lovely. Just like that. Which, they're like perfectly cooked, you know? When you have a, a perfectly cooked shrimp, it's... Mm much better. Boom, boom. I'm oh, sorry. And then we take Lovely. our long hot pepper and we're just going to put it over the top. Nice. And of course the long hot is optional. Yeah. And we might just take a little basil oil just to give it a little color around the plate. And there we have So for all you vegan and vegetarian lovers out there, this next small plate is going to blow you away. We've got special tofu here and Ken, I'm excited because there's people that come in all the time, they want what they want and yep. uh, a vegetarian and a vegan, it's a great selection for someone, Asian inspired, I love it. Absolutely, you know um, what we try to do here, we have a lot of different um, choices on our menu. Right. So if you're vegan, vegetarian, you can come in, mm -hmm. like um, our cauliflower puree, it tastes like mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then we yes. have farro and we have quinoa. and. There's a lot of stuff to choose from, yes. vegetables, grains, but um, this is inspired because we're getting a lot more vegetarians and we want to make it interesting, you know, we want them to be like, wow, you know, yes. that was, that was we cool. We keep our vegetarians happy too. So where do we start, Ken? Well, we cut up some tofu kind of into triangles. Okay. You know, we're just going to take the tofu and we're going to put it in cornstarch very lightly. But you, as you can see, it's a real nice thin layer. Yeah. You know? And uh, it'll end up nice and crispy. So we'll let that crisp up a little bit more. Cool. And what we'll do is we get buckwheat soba noodles from the Asian market. Nice. They're uh, really cool. And what we do is we cook them until mm -hmm. they still have their al dente, basically, <laughs> where they still have a little bit of bite. You don't want them too mushy. Cool. So, and we toss that with Rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, and soy sauce. Lovely. Lightly, though. Okay. We don't want to go too much. All right. But we also made an Asian slaw out of uh, savoy cabbage, red pepper, carrot, and a little red cabbage. And I love how this is all homemade. Yeah. Oh, Every yeah. Every single bit of it. And the freshness, too. You have to make it fresh. It's something that mm -hmm. cannot sit 
sit around. Great. And this in the noodles right on top. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a hit. Which is very cool. So you can put the tofu, kind of stand it up. Love it. Nice and hot. But as you can see, it's it's crisp, it's crispy on the outside. And light. And light on the inside. Fluffy on the inside. So what we want to do is kind of just drizzle that sauce around. So now you have a couple different components to the dish. You have, you have the, um, the slaw, the buckwheat soba noodle, you have the crispy tofu, and you have the orange hoisin sauce. Speak Easy Ales and Lagers is here tonight in the house, and I am here with Brandon, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing, over for Speak Easy all the way on the West Coast, California, San Francisco. Sure, it's a lot warmer there than it is here, because burr, it's cold. So, Brandon, tell me first a little bit about Speak Easy. Tell me a little bit about this cool brewery that you have brewing out in and, and Cali. Yeah, we've uh, we've been around for uh, 15 years now. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary. Uh, we started as a real small operation, a couple of home brewers with a passion for making beer. Um, just saw an opportunity to, to present some styles of beer that weren't really being produced, um, you know, on an annual basis. And you know, at, at that time, there was a lot of inconsistency and you know, a lot of exciting breweries doing things, but nobody doing it in a way that was presenting it uniquely and consistently. Um, so they started out as a you know draft only, a couple of guys in the back of a van delivering to their favorite bars. Um, and then just built it, built it, built it, and it's just gotten bigger every single year. And we went, undertook a major expansion in the last year uh, that launched officially in October uh, with a new facility. And uh, now we're, uh, we're ready to roll into new markets in 2013, 2014. So we've got a plan to, to eventually take the brand on a national level in the next four to five years. Awesome. we got a road tour coming on. I love it. So makes you guys special is it seems like it's um it's a lot different than other breweries especially coming now over to the east coast yeah i mean we've we've tried to do a few things differently i mean one our approach to you know west coast beers are defined by uh being very hop forward you know that's really what the defining characteristic of when you say west coast pales west coast ipas uh, a lot of hopping dry hopping heavy-handed to the point, but uh, we're trying to approach that from a way that says, yes, we are into that, um, but we also want to, we want to present them in a way that's approachable, um, in a way that is balanced, and that's one of the things that tends to be missing from a lot of uh, bigger craft beers is the sense of balance, the sense of drinkability, even in a six and a half percent beer with a lot of dry hopping in it. Right. Um, so there's there's that end where we've really tried to present uh, beers that kind of appeal to a broad spectrum of people from the entry level craft drinker that's just you know kind of you know learning about it to the guy that's looking for the biggest strongest imperial stout or double IPA or barrel aged beer. Um, and then the other end of things is just presenting a brand that's unique. Um, I mean, we're not trying to present a brand that's, uh, you know, it seemed like there was a lot of very pastoral imagery going on with, with West Coast craft. Um, you know, a lot of mountain scenes and streams and rivers and ponds. And, you know, and we, we're being a San Francisco brand, uh, you know, really kind of growing up in the alleys of San Francisco. You know, we wanted to be a brand that was a little grittier, a little dirtier, and really represented what we were all about, which was more of an urban core. Um, and we, we've since kind of taken that to the markets that we've done well in uh, across the country. And, you know, so and I think we have a unique imagery, you know, sort of hearkening back to the, the 1920s, uh, you know, prohibition. Throwback. I love it. Yeah. Now let's talk about Mohawk House. We are the premier place for craft brews. We've got 50 on tap. It's pretty impressive, folks. If you haven't seen this yet, you really need to try. You're living under a rock. You gotta get down here. How does this compare to you? This is pretty impressive. And your relationship here with the Mohawk House. No, this place is amazing. I, I absolutely was uh, you know, blown away when I when I first got to see this place. And um, you know, it's it's a beautiful setting, it's a beautiful building. I love that they've even got some really cool, like sort of speakeasy prohibition signery around up around. Um, but amazing beer selection. Um, you really you're representing both the East Coast and West Coast and some cool imported stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, it's amazing to see uh, such good attention to craft being paid. Um, and, it, and obviously, when we had an opportunity to pick a place to launch um, in New Jersey, you know, and it, when we talked to our distributor, this was one of the first places that we wanted to do it. They were excited to have us. So uh, we were thrilled to be part of this. Okay, so our last plate that we're showcasing here in the kitchen today is our black tea honey glazed spare ribs. I'm already salivating over this and you haven't even cooked it yet. Yeah. So 
Where do we go, boys? Well, what we do, we braise them. First, we get our um, brookshire mm -hmm. pork um, spare ribs. And what we do is we braise them in the oven okay. with a little stock. And um, pretty simple. Some uh, mirepoix, which is uh, celery, carrot, and onions, vegetables, mm -hmm. and uh, just to give it a little flavor. And we braise them. And what we're going to do is we are going to put them in our bowl and hit it with some honey glaze. Now, what I did is I this took... This is awesome. I took honey and I infused it with black tea, which is pretty cool. I tried cool. this. Yeah. It is and it, so good. A nice hot grill. Ooh. What we want to do is char these up a little bit. Okay. Because we char them up a little bit, it's going to give us some flavor. Some nice hot grill. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Now, we got some flavor. That's nice. That's beautiful. That's nice. So, we're going to toss them back in our bowl. Hi. And once you have these set up, this is a pretty easy pickup. This is not too difficult. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, nice. already we already have them par cooked. Right. So we'll hit them with some more honey. Nice. Get a nice glaze. Oh, That's I perfect. love it. Toss them. We like to toss a little sesame seed on them, just to give it some color, give it some, uh, enhance the flavor a little bit. Love this. Cool little small plate. I love it. Boom. Who would have thought? Boom. That cute little ribs could be a small plate. Oh yeah, love, love it. it. Boom. Make sure you get a nice coating that honey on there, and boom. Beautiful. That works for me. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh. Okay, folks, so here we are with our finished, sophisticated small plates. And let me tell you, this is so impressive, so new, trendy. You're not going to see this anywhere around here. Right in Sparta, New Jersey. It's unbelievable what these guys can do in this kitchen. And I am so excited to get to sample. As you can see, we have some fabulous dishes that we didn't cook on camera, but they cooked uh, while we were getting it ready, and we're gonna explain those to you too. Kenny, what do we have here real quick for the folks? Right here we have lamb lollipops with a horseradish crust, um, a um, grilled rosemary polenta, mm -hmm. and pinot noir glaze. Fantastic, and here? Here we have a grilled chicken frisee salad with poached pears, cranberries, toasted almonds, and um, shaved gouda with a warm honey mustard vinaigrette. Fantastic, and right here? And this is a spicy shrimp uh, maki roll with um, the seaweed. Um, cucumber, avocado, and shrimp, which is uh, straight it's to the so point. Good. And it's so good. It's great. And we also have, as always, 50 beers on tap here at Mohawk House, and we have all local breweries constantly in and out. And this week we've got some fantastic ones. Um, Ramstein Double Plaid, I'm gonna try the Cane Rye Head High, the Oma Gang Art of Darkness, and the River Horse Scotch. All local, where can you get a local brewery in and out constantly here at Mohawk House? All right, boys, you got a sample with me. Let's first Yeah, where do you get a paddle of, of beers like this? A paddle and of then beer and then this. You get a couple appetizers, it's the way Can't to go. Can't go wrong. All right, we'll start with this tofu, lovely here. Boys, dig right in, please. Awesome. We're all gonna share and try and talk. We always look so cute with food in our mouth. Try to get a little bit of that sauce. All right, I'm just shoving the whole thing on up. Mmm. Delicious. So next up, we've got some of this maki roll. How do I eat this? What's the proper way? Do I just throw the whole thing in my mouth? That's what I do. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Finger Let's, food. That's what we'll do. Finger food, small plates. We love it. Mm. Really good. Oh my god. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. I don't know why you'd want to go anywhere else when you can actually come and have yeah, it's, a fresh it, it's maki a good roll one. here. <laughs> this is really, really good. Wow. Okay. Move over a little bit. So now we've got this. The grilled chicken, chicken salad with frisee. Frisee. With the warm honey mustard vinaigrette. Fantastic. Sliced almonds, gouda, and poached pear. Lovely. It's a nice winter salad. Frisee, I've been hearing that more and more. Oh, and that dressing? 
It's really good honey mm. from Steve and Rachel's farm. And it's mustard. It's not egg and all the oil and all that. It is what it is here. So, so light. That's nice. You want to get a little fork full of the polenta and make sure you dip it in the sauce. Cause all right. Like all We're just going to go right off the bone here, guys. Like all these dishes, they all come together, like with the salad. Mm. You want to get a little bit of the gouda and everything together. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow, boys, that is amazing. So, I'm taking one of these babies. Yes, eat up. I know, I'm not leaving. I'm coming oh. over to this. And what's so cool about this is, oh my god, you have the cream cheese melting, but you get that, like I said, the soybean, the crunch of the soybean. So you get this nice, smooth, creamy texture Almost from the cheese. Dessert. So cool, and the lovely. crispy outside. It's awesome. Mm, let's go shrimp first. Our Italian inspired. Now, if you want spicy, you can take a little bit of the long hot pepper, or if you just want regular. I'm gonna pass on spicy. So like... you can put the pepper to the side. Okay. And you just go for the pasta and shrimp. All right. I'm a big fan of broccoli, Rob. Yes. So we'll get a nice. How is it, Kenny? I'm. Excuse my fingers. How is it? It's awesome. And you can taste that oh. nuttiness of the garlic. You know what I mean? It, it, it the infuses the, of the whole dish. The nuttiness of the garlic is amazing. Wow. Yeah. So is, would you take it right off the bone? Would you cut it? Like, how, what, just if I'm grab. a lady, how do I do Come it? Come on, just grab it. Eat it. I'd probably cut this if I was on a date or something, folks. But you know what? It's about good food, husband. good beer, and good people. It's not about stuffiness. You know what I mean? It's, it's mm. about pick up the food with your hands and eat it. Oh my gosh. Be, be human. <laughs> wow, the honey tastes so good. You can really taste it through there. These are awesome. And do you understand about the overpowering? Mm hmm. It's not overpowering the sauce. Not at all. You can completely still taste the ribs. Yep. With um, the, the salad. The little charredness and the honey, it's, and it's nice. Mm, wow. Mm. Once again, wow, and that beer. I can't say enough good things. They are introducing something new and hot here at Mohawk House with these sophisticated small plates. You're not gonna see this anywhere around where you can come in and have a nice small, quick appetizer, test and taste your palate over and over again until your entree, or you can just come in for this, which is awesome. Yep. We're gonna be publicizing this on Facebook, Always go, like us on Facebook, check us out there. We take pictures constantly, always telling people about our dishes, yep. um, our staff, our beers, our events. We have the hottest nightlife around on a Friday and Saturday night. We often do Thursdays as well. It's ever changing here, which is really cool. Right now we're in the winter time and it really, it heats up the entire winter right into spring and summer, which is awesome. Also, we're revamping our website. Um, you can always go on that too with the mohawkhouse.com. The speakeasy too. Yes. <clears throat> so, honestly, there's so much to see and feel and experience here at Mohawk House. Can't say enough. We've had uh, amazing local breweries come down here. Check them out this uh, these past few months. And then, of course, with these new small plates. I love it. So, again, it's been my pleasure. Brian, Ken. Absolutely. Thank you always. so much for inviting us into the kitchen. Come on down. Say hello. I'll see you here. Our wonderful, warm staff, Stephen, Rachel, uh, Scro, lovely people. Can't say enough. Come on down to Mohawk House. Check us out. Um, for Destination Mohawk House, I'm Nikki Morville. Good night. <laughs>